this is a, a terrific opportunity. Um, and I appreciate the chance to um, share, you know, some ideas with you uh, about what's happening in the ADRI these days and uh, how we have been working with uh, Malika as our Associate Dean for Research on this kind of new direction, new thinking um, in the ADRI around health and wellness, uh, which, you know, um, as we'll see and talk about, certainly requires uh, the ability to sustain interdisciplinary collaborations uh, in order to move forward. So um, if you haven't um, checked out the ADRI in a while, um, our website now kind of gives you a sense of um, where we're going uh, in terms of um, health and wellness. Um, and you'll see if you take the time to visit there, um, some of the sort of more uh, recent projects that have been finding their way through the ADRI. Um, Bold Over, which we heard a little bit about yesterday, in fact. Um, uh, and uh, the Socially Engaged Community Project in Ceramics and Food Security. Um, this is one of the sort of newer collaborations and um, Shannon Goff and Chris Gray have really been sort of amazing in, in launching this project out there and, um, and we're excited to see sort of where it may go next. Um, but we, you'll also see uh, Kristen Millett's work, um, Cindy White's work in microbial migrations. These are projects that have been in the ADRI for a while um, and that represent really interesting kinds of collaborations um, that are sustained in a variety of ways. Again, I'll talk a little bit more about what we've learned about sustaining these collaborations here in a minute. The HERE2 project with uh, Jean Marie Higgins, um, Stephen Rubin's work with diabetes in Africa. Um, so this transition into sort of arts design, health and wellness has actually occurred pretty easily since so much of the work of many of our colleagues across the college touches on questions of health and wellness. Um, uh, and so it was sort of a, um, in some ways it felt like a no brainer to me for the ADRI to move in this direction. Also, you know, obviously a little selfishly that that's all where my work is <laughs> um, around mental health and wellness and collaborations through the College of Nursing and through the College of HHD. Um, and so it felt like the right time for the ADRI to move toward this kind of focus as well in terms of the next iteration of the work that we're going to do there. Um, So I think one of the, or the, the question that I asked myself when Mihune approached me about um, having the ADRI participate in this symposium was about how, how do you sustain interdisciplinary collaboration, right? It's, I mean, all in the arts, we all consider our work interdisciplinary and, and I, you know, and that's really true. Um, that most artistic work is interdisciplinary work. Interdisciplinary collaboration is a whole nother ball game. I, and I'm talking specifically about, you know, collaborating with people in other disciplines, right? So that's sort of the context of what I'm talking about. And, you know, the, the challenges of sustaining those kinds of collaborations. And so what I did was I sort of surveyed the literature out there about what people have learned about sustaining interdisciplinary collaboration put that into sort of my own experience. Um, and that's what I wanna share with you. So I think the first thing that, you know, um, can sometimes take people by surprise is if you wanna collaborate with someone in another discipline, you often underestimate the ways in which you have to prepare yourself for new ways of working or new ways of thinking and interacting. Um, new ways of trying to figure out vocabulary and dialogue. We use terms very differently than scientists and social scientists do. And finding that common ground requires effort and work on your part. Um, that um, 
the success, and I think Malika will talk more about this, is of interdisciplinary collaboration um, really relies on the depth of your own specialization in your area, in your interdisciplinary research area. Uh, disciplinary depth is really important to successful interdisciplinary collaboration. Um, I will caution you if you're, you know, if you're new to the idea of collaborating with folks in other disciplines or you're early in that um, process to avoid the tendency to branch out too quickly and in too many directions. Um, I'm so sorry about that. The phone going off in the background. I thought I turned it off anyway. <laughs> uh, because that and I learned this the hard way that can diffuse the impact of your own work in the collaboration. You can get lost pretty easily. Um, it's really important for you to stay focused on your own disciplinary strength and skills. We all know that, right? We're told stay current in your discipline, know what's happening, stay on top of your own work. That's even more important when you're collaborating with folks in other disciplines because they rely on you um, to bring that expertise in your discipline that they don't have. Um, it may sound counterintuitive, but in many situations, your value as an interdisciplinary colleague is directly proportional to your skills in your own discipline. All right. Um, when I was working on the, um, the NSF um, uh, at science and education grant around fracking with a team of, I think there were 18 people on that team, um, from geologists to hydrogeologists to sociologists or rural sociologists. There were so many disciplines in that collaboration. It became clear early on that having that sort of the strength of footing in your own discipline was the only way that that collaboration was going to be successful. Um, let's see. So here's where the real work comes in. Um, and I think often we struggle to find the time to do this, to make the space to do this. Um, but building core competencies that sustain interdisciplinary research by taking courses or learning on your own in those other disciplines that you're collaborating with, right? Um, you know, for example, I, in the last couple of years that I've been working as an artist in residence in the College of Nursing, I've sat in on a lot of nursing classes, right, um, to sort of understand more deeply what's happening in that discipline. I've sat in on their research seminars for the purposes of my own education, so that when I come back to a team that I'm working with, with an idea about how to impact the research, uh, I'm doing it, you know, with a point of view that that's informed by some new knowledge of my own, of the discipline, you know, in, of the nursing discipline. Um, this takes a lot of time, it can take a lot of time, which, you know, is a huge commodity for us, right? How do we make time to do this? Um, but if you want to successfully uh, sustain interdisciplinary collaborations, making this time becomes one of the things you have to do and that you need to do. Um, and there are always opportunities to take courses um, in that other discipline or to sit in, uh, to learn, like for example, nurses, uh, a number of nurse researchers use the case study methodology or some variation of the case study methodology. Um, and if you've ever used case study methodologies, you know that there are lots of ways to do that. So, you know, I needed to understand what these uh, particular nurse researchers were doing with case studies um, in order for me to bring something to that table. Um, it also then gave me a chance to sort of sit in on um, one of the things they often do in HHD and in nursing um, is if you're going after a grant, you have to do a pitch, you know, to a to a group of folks who are going to give you serious feedback, this review, this pre-review process. And I was able to sit in on that and learn, um, you know, what are the challenges that those researchers face in getting funding that will sustain that work. It was a real eye-opener to me. We don't tend to do those kinds of things in uh, arts and design disciplines. Um, 
So again, any chance you have to attend seminars and workshops and other disciplines to participate in those research seminars will only increase your ability to succeed at sustaining uh, these kinds of interdisciplinary collaborations. So um, here's just a few questions for you and then I'm gonna turn things over to, uh, to Malika here, but um, it's important for you, where are you in the tenure process? Um, and how does this work count or not count in your area, right? I know that one of the things I take for granted is as a senior faculty member, as a tenured full professor, I don't have to worry about going through tenure again. I don't have to worry about having someone in my own discipline say, well, how does your work in nursing count with us? You know, or what, how does publishing in a journal that's not a theater journal or not an arts-based journal count here, right? And for people facing the tenure track, those can be really difficult questions. Um, and so it's something you need to understand and make sure that you have the right support uh, in your area. Um, it's one of the things we can do for you in the ADRI is to help um, champion your work and to help you find the support that you need. Um, I won't read through all of these uh, for time's sake, um, and, and so you can see these, but um, I, the other thing I think, and Malika will talk about this, is to know what the sources of support are, um, the resources for the work, the time, the grants, to seriously engage in interdisciplinary research and interdisciplinary collaboration that can get you where you want to go. And again, I offer the ADRI as a, a place to help you find answers to these questions. Um, and so with that, I'm going to uh, turn things over to our Associate Dean, Malika Bose. I wanted to talk a little bit about what we are doing at the college and then the university. But before that, I just wanted to address that, you know, we're talking of interdisciplinary research. And in my opinion, sustainability research is inherently interdisciplinary. And I put up the sustainable development goals just to show that most sustainability research, if not all, is around thematic areas. And there has been a certain history where we came to these SDGs because people have realized a piecemeal approach does not work for real life problems. So if you look at any of these sustainable development goals, um, the one I'm most familiar with being a planner and architect is the goal number 11, which is sustainable cities and communities. You cannot have one discipline or one profession do that. So all of these goals, whether they be uh, dealing with water or hunger or poverty, have a wide range of disciplines involved and community partners. So both are really important. So sustainability research, the other thing is I think, you know, to kind of tell you where I come from, I um, was struck and this has always stayed with me, uh, Arjun Apudurai, an anthropologist, he made this uh, statement that research is a specialized name for a generalized activity. We privilege some people to say they're doing research, but really, you know, there can be research with capital R and a research with a small r. And in this age of big data and being inundated with information, all of us are all the time having to make sense and you know uh, have our behaviors dependent on how well we are able to parse through information. So in international development circles, uh, what they say is that sustainability work is intersectoral. That means there are different sectors involved in it. And because community is key, there are some things about sustainability research which is interdisciplinary and we have to kind of think about it. Uh, one of the things is that, so it's not only academics that are involved, there's the community involved and hence the communication becomes really important how we speak not only amongst different uh, disciplines that Bill alluded to, you know, the words we use, the, um, they sometimes mean different things to different people coming to a shared language. Then of course, then talking also about other people who are community uh, leaders 
and community partners or grassroots organizations. How do we communicate with them? How do we communicate and negotiate across difference? And I think the arts and design, you know, we can play a really important role in that. Uh, we can actually be the drivers of it. We are not going to be the translators only. So really, I think in, the, in our college, we really want to think of sustainability research with arts and design at its core, not at its periphery. Interdisciplinary research is also both time intensive and consumes a lot of time. So you, um, so which means that we need to have champions, people who are aware of this. So it is our jobs, the administrators and um, people at the different centers to see that we can provide the support for the people who are doing this, especially again, as uh, Bill pointed out, depending on in the academia where you are in your uh, professional career to not only support you and make sure you're successful and help you in your own trajectory. Uh, so having said that, mm, Bill, the next slide, please. Mm. Really wanted to talk a little bit about what we can do and are doing for interdisciplinary collaboration. And then uh, hopefully we'll have a conversation. So one of the best ways is the seed grants program that we have in the college as well as the university. Uh, seed grants are a really good way to start a new collaboration to um, feel out and do and form your teams. You have to have, and nowadays, if you are thinking of any externally funded research, which I hope all of you are thinking of, it is done in teams. And so this is a team science approach. And to get your team together, you need to know one another, learn how to um, you know, talk across disciplines, like I mentioned, and also relationally. You, know, you have to establish relationships and trust between not only uh, the different disciplines, but again, since a lot of this work is actually will result in being community-based, who are your community partners? getting trust, getting um, entry into those communities, being uh, at the table and uh, being part of the community takes time. So many of these seed grants, so we have a few in the college, but there are a wide variety of them available at the university level, especially through the uh, different institutes. The institutes in, uh, at Penn State are really unique. They're unique in the sense that I think our administration was very thoughtful in that they made these institutes as standalone institutes. They are not associated with any college because they had the foresight to think if they were attached to a college, maybe the college might have more to do with it than they would want. So these institutes are in the PSIE, um, the SSRI, the Social Science Research Institute, then the Huck Institute, all of these, and there are several others, have a lot of seed grants and they give planning grants too, because they understand that sometimes all you need is not a lot of money, but a little bit of money and some, it legitimizes you to have these conversations with people and figure out how you're going to uh, approach a problem you're interested in and how you're going to uh, form your teams. So I would encourage all of you to be on the lookout for some of these grants and then apply for them whenever you have uh, this possibility. And then again, within our college, the ADRI, uh, CPAD, you know, um, in the Stuckman School, you have the SCDC and then the collaborative design research that does actually foster this kind of work. The second way is that um, Penn State has formalized through the Institute these faculty co-hires. And I would say perhaps we were a little late in starting this being uh, participants in this, but we have now started to participate in these things. So what, that hap what happens is that we actually have faculty then who are 
uh, co-hires between an institute and a college. So we have our first co-hire in the water position who's a um, co-hire between landscape architecture and PSIE. This actually places a, it's an interdisciplinary position and the requirements for this, these positions are to engage in this kind of work. Penn State is really, as most of you already know, is a huge complex place. So in some ways it's uh, siloed, even though they are trying to uh, change some of those things, but there are so many things going on. I would encourage all of you to take advantage of lectures and uh, at not only in the units in our college, but uh, in the university at large and at the institutes. I always have an anecdote that I met one of the people I um, collaborated with for quite some years at a conference in uh, San Diego, sitting across the table. And we found that we both do the same kind of work and then realized we both were Penn State faculty. So uh, I think that that was 10 years ago. I think Penn State has since then uh, allowed a lot of uh, more um, occurrences of interdisciplinary work where you can find somebody else. So I would also urge you then all of you to actually to go up and create a profile in Penn State Pure where you can put in your um, keywords to describe your research. So other Penn State faculty who are looking for partners and you'll be surprised to see how often they're looking for somebody in the arts or the design to help them that they can actually reach out to you and you can use it to reach out to them. And then of course, uh, we are not only in the business of doing research, teaching is an integral part of what we do. So I think we need to be also inculcating in our students um, this um, way of, it's a worldview, I almost think of it as um, making students aware of how to um, approach a problem or even their professional career paths, what are they going to do? So you will see more often now than earlier that students will start with one profession and then do a master's in another related profession, which really makes them unique uh, and to be able to do interdisciplinary work. So for, and for example, I know from my own experience, I had a student who uh, did landscape architecture and then did a PhD in um, human health and behavior. That really made her now an expert in two very interrelated domains, but there aren't that many people with that kind of expertise. But this is getting more common and you can you even have different degree programs that are coming out and I'm in Penn State as well as other universities, which is around themes rather than being, you know, a landscape architecture or a sculpture in uh, visual arts. They are actually bringing things together to talk, to understand some kinds of problems. And so if you want to put it in that way. So through our teaching also, I think we should be trying to reach out and collaborate with other colleges. Now we have the inter-domain course that we can do, which is a way to introduce students from another discipline to your discipline. And sometimes it changes the trajectory of, uh, you know, the academic uh, life yeah, at Penn State and also encourage your students to go out and take classes outside of our college to broaden their horizons. So these are some of the different ways I think we can, um, we're supporting interdisciplinary co collaboration in the college. And I would like to then, you know, open up to discussion and see what, what you would ask, like us to respond to or any questions or comments that you might have. Bill, back to you. Yeah, I just um, just a quick follow up to some of um, what Malika is talking about, um, because I think there's some real leverage for us here. Uh, for example, we the in the past year, the ADRI has um, been regularly collaborating with the Hamer Center for Community Design with Lisa Ayulo and some of those programs. Um, 
And the other day at our um, center directors meeting with Malika, listening to Jose talk and to Anne talk about CPAD. Okay, I know I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. So it just suddenly <laughs> sort of, you know, the light bulb went on in my head that our own centers together, uh, there's such interdisciplinary focus across these uh, centers and the work we're doing that if we leverage that to other centers and institutes at the university, um, so that it wasn't ADRI reaching out to so-and-so, but it was ADRI, Hamer Center, SDD, SCDC. If we were going after these collaborative um, opportunities together, the, the, the leverage we'd have would be substantially greater. And it seems as if that's what foundations are looking for. They want multiple um, they want multiple solutions to problems that are complex because the solutions need to be complex. So um, it feels like an exciting time to be thinking about how to sustain interdisciplinary collaboration, both within our college and across the university. 